Can you hear me? All right. So I will talk about smart swimmers and turbulent flows. I will uh, define all the terms in the title very soon. Uh, I'm at the Indian Institute of Science, and this work uh, would have been impossible without my collaborators, Jay Kumar, who's in the audience, Akhilesh, who might be in the audience, and Jeremy Beck, who's at the Université uh, Côte um, d'Azur, or Mean Paritech in Nice. Uh, this really would have been impossible without Jay Kumar, who has a wonderful computer science background and who helped us to learn many things. Um, okay, so uh, here is motivation. I'll talk a little bit about homogeneous isotropic turbulence, path planning problems, smart swimmers, and results. Uh, you know, birds migrate. They have to fly several thousands of kilometers. They don't always flap their wings. They often take advantage of... Uh, warm updrafts in the uh, in the atmosphere so that is they're being smart they're somehow finding out some things about the flow i will talk about much smaller swimmers for those of you who know the jargon of turbulence sub uh, um, kolmogorov scale and i would like the swimmers to go from some point to some other point in a turbulent pl flow in a smart way what is the naive strategy? You tell the swimmer to point from wherever uh, it starts off to the target. Okay? And if you have the naive strategy, in the center is the target, and here are the swimmers, and they are all going towards the target, and you will see that they are clustering, and sometimes they get trapped. Uh, the picture here is for two-dimensional turbulence where particles do tend to get trapped in vortical regions and therefore they don't reach the target as well as they might if they use some other strategy. Okay, so what are the other strategies? There have been some strategies which have been in the published literature for a few years now. Um, the first one which I alluded to is this, learning to soar in turbulent environments, um, where they actually uh, combined some experiments on drones and so on to look at this issue. And then there was a paper in PRL by the group in Rome, Flow Navigation by Smart Micro Swimmers via Reinforcement Learning. Okay, that was not in a turbulent flow. I will not explain all the details because we clearly don't have time for that. And, but I will, you know, begin where these people began but go much beyond because we will look at turbulent flows. So first, how do we get a flow? We get a flow by looking at the Navier-Stokes equations which I have written here, incompressible flow and uh, standard notations, nu is the kinematic viscosity, p the pressure, rho the density, etc. Large scale forcing and the vorticity omega is curl of u. I show you a plot of the vorticity here in two dimensions. How do we handle swimmers? Well, uh, at the simplest level, this is really the simplest, simplest level. If the position of the swimmer is x, then dx by dt is u, which is the Eulerian velocity at that point in space and time. You also want it to swim, so you give it some velocity v sub s for swimmer in the direction p hat. And if you write down the simplest uh, way in which such a swimmer would respond to the flow, it's half omega cross p. But in addition, you add another term which gives the swimmer some preferred direction o hat. So this is p and that is o hat. And believe me, it all works out like this. I don't have time to explain every term, but I can in the lunch break. So what are the parameters now in this model? There is V sub S, the swimmer speed, and B, which is a time scale of alignment. All right? And we will non-dimensionalize this as we go along. So the naive strategy says, always take O hat to be in the direction of the target. Okay? And the direction of the target is given here, that is x of the target, that is xt, or current position of the swimmer. All right? Now, of course, you have to be able to solve the Navier-Stokes equation, and believe me, we know how to do that, so I'm not going to describe to you how we do it. And we can do it with some resolution. For the moment, most of the data I'll show you is for two-dimensional turbulence. 
uh, which uh, is in the so-called forward cascade regime. So this, we are fo forcing the fluid at some large length scale, and there's a forward cascade of entropy, uh, et cetera. Hmm? All right? Now, in this flow, we have looked at many, many uh, ways. One is situation A, where these are the swimmers, and they flow towards specified targets, which are distributed throughout the flow. There's another condition we have looked at, where we have swimmers distributed at random, and they all are supposed to go to the flow, uh, to the target in the center. Okay, if you do this with a naive strategy, with the random targets, you get this sort of agglomeration of swimmers, and with the central target, you get this. The control parameter here is the swimmer's velocity divided by the RMS velocity of the flow. So there's this level of clustering. So the naive strategy is leading to clustering and trapping of swimmers in vortical regions. If you change this parameter, uh, then you get this level of clustering. The question is, you know, you can work out various things, I will not dwell on them. Can we do better than that? And, you know, elect uh, people in uh, computer science, electrical engineering know these things. There's something called optimal control. So can we find some other optimal control path which takes us to the target in a way that looks superficially more stupid than the naive strategy, but actually ends up being cleverer? And then because you have a turbulent flow, then you use some form of stochastic optimal control. Uh, there are many, many ways of doing this, so let me not. What is required for optimal control is first to discretize the states of the particle. So if I look at the particle, of course it can point in many different directions, excuse me, uh, uh, which are the theta, the angle between p hat and the direction to the target. I discretize it, I uh, put four uh, uh, possible values of theta in some ranges, red, green, blue, gray. And similarly, I discretize vorticity, omega greater than omega naught is red, in some region green, blue. So there are 12 states, which are listed here. And then you have four actions. The actions, of course, also the O hat can point in any direction, but we pick four. One is in the direction of the target, one is against the target, one is perpendicular to that and anti-perpendicular, they are given there. So in the language of reinforced learn, reinforcement learning, this is a so-called Q matrix. I clearly cannot describe it to you in the remaining two minutes and 26 seconds, but believe me, we've done it right. And with this, actually, we can uh, speed up uh, the arrival times of, of the particles at the target if we actually make it an even more complicated thing called adversarial learning where one master particle follows the skew matrix strategy, the slave follows the naive strategy. And let me just show you one plot, which is a difference between NQ, which is the number of adversarial swimmers using the Q learning strategy, N sub N using the naive strategy. This is versus iterations. Initially, the naive strategy is winning, but eventually the, uh, the clever strategy works, and that's why the swimmers are smart. And uh, we can do arrival time statistics. I cannot go through all details. All these depend on parameters. The two parameters here are the non-dimensionalized velocity of the swimmer, that's changing here, and the non-dimensionalized time scale, non-dimensionalized by some eddy turnover time. All right, and you can see that what you should be looking for is a minimum here and then an upturn. So the upturn means that your smart strategy is helping the swimmer. We can do it in 3D too. The discretization is more complicated, but I won't go through it. There also, our results are preliminary, but here also we can get some improvement. And this is quite a bit of an improvement relative to what was done earlier in the sense that the, the earlier studies were done in, you know, stationary flows like the Taylor Green flow. And there you can ask qualitatively, what does the Q-learning strategy do? It helps the swimmers to avoid the vortical regions. It doesn't go through directly through the vortical region where it would get trapped. We can actually do better than that by having many swimmers. They had only one. Uh, again, I will not describe this in detail. 
So let me end with conclusions. I have only 19 seconds, so we have shown various such things. And let me thank you for your attention, and I'll take questions if you have them. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Mention the strategy that was... The, the strategy is the cue learning and all that, which I don't have time to cover. But over lunch, I'm happy to do it. Jay Kumar is even happier to do it. Yeah. Um, it takes some time. It's not... Yeah. Uh, is there any way of comparing whatever strategies come out of your study with strategies actually followed by organisms seeking out uh, scents? Um, so okay, good question. In turbulent I air. No, I have to learn that first and then I will give you the answer. Okay. okay. <laughs>